everyone, it's Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. Well, this is my third video in how to use up some of your extra envelopes laying around. And my next idea is not a new idea either. There's many on the internet, but it's to use your envelopes as a base for banners. They make a perfect and easy, quick base for your banners if you want to make a personalized banner. And it really makes the measuring easy as well because you can make your layers the size of the card that fits in the envelope and then it makes a really nice layer. For this one I used a craft envelope and it is for an A2 size card which the card is four and a quarter by five and a half. So that's the size that I started with my layers and then I just embellished from there. All right, let me show you another sample that I made. This one I created for my daughter Kira. She just decorated her room in a black and white and um, maroon theme with roses in there, which makes very striking and pretty. So I created a banner with her name on it, and I just used the white A2 size envelopes, and I simply cut these to look like a, a standard tag. I used three different kinds of washi tape, one that said with love, one that was a silver 1 8 inch, and one that had some uh, white hearts on a black background. And then I used some cherry cobbler to make a bow to punch out the uh, letters for her name, and as well to make a little bit of a border to adhere onto the back. Let me show you that. <clears throat> so I adhered the border onto the back to make the end look pretty. I simply um, used a die cut of an oval shape I had to cut out some striking black and white backgrounds because it matches her room. And if you're interested in the black and white patterns, I did get them at katherinepooler.com and it's called Black Tie Gala. Now I punched out these letters on the mini envelope punch board. And I have the mini envelope punch board and I have the large envelope punch board and I do use them frequently because we do a lot of banners in our house. For every family celebration, for every holiday, we either put a big banner on the wall or we'll hang a smaller banner off of our chandelier over our dining room table. But the mini alphabet punch board takes a blank that is um, one and a half by two and a half, which is a perfect size for this one. But you can use die cuts or other punches or stickers or even stamping it, which I did in the Joy Banner for Christmas. Now I have a lot of A2 size envelopes, so that's what I'm using most frequently, and it makes a really nice banner for the wall. But I also have one that's a little bit smaller, because you can use any size envelope you want. And that's this one. Now for this one, I used a little note card um, envelope. And the note card is two and a half by four and a half inches. Now I like the portrait orientation for my banners. You can also do them horizontal. There are some out there which they do the loaded envelope pockets for swaps where they'll stuck a stick a bunch of embellishments in there. So what they'll do is they'll take the envelope and they'll decorate it for their partner, um, how many ever they want. And they'll actually, once they're finished, put the envelope in here and just seal it up over there. So you can seal a bunch of goodies into the envelope when they send it and you know, as many as they want. And you can also do it this way if you want a horizontal banner. But I, I do like them in portrait, so that's the way I did mine. So you can do them in any size envelope that you want. Now, let me go ahead and do one more. This is a love banner and it's meant for an anniversary or a wedding. And I actually have one more that I wanted to add to this one, and I'll show you how I did this. All right, as I said, the card is two and a half by four and a half inches, so that's what I cut my layer at. And I just went ahead and sealed the envelope. You could also, if you wanted to tuck some things into the envelope, you could seal this one over the top of the ribbon because it is top loading in the orientation that I have it. And how I did the bottoms was I actually took this and either temporarily tacked it down or I just held it and I and I went ahead and did my bottom treatment but with both of them held together right at the bottom. So if they're right at the bottom and I either punched it or cut a flag, used a um, circle template and I'll show you that for the bigger envelope again or I scalloped it. So this one I'm just going to go ahead and flag it because it's pretty easy and I usually eyeball it. So right in the center, and if you want to measure you can, but I usually just eyeball it. It's two and three quarters of an inch wide, so about one and three eighths of an inch. So that would be right about where this butterfly sits. I just do a free wing flagging of it. So I'll just take my scissors and I'll just trim it up a little bit. 
right in the center and then holding it securely together I'll go from this side right up to the top of where I trimmed and as well I'll adjust it if I need to because I just twisted that a little I'll cut it from this side from the corner up to where I cut in and that gives me a flag where both of my bottoms are the same all right so let me go ahead and stick that down Now, if you're going to glue a flap over, if the flap is in the right orientation and you just want to glue the flap over your ribbon, you can do that. I already sealed mine down. So what I'm going to do is just very narrowly trim off this so I have an opening that I can thread my um, ribbon or twine or whatever I want to use through. Okay, so on this one I'm using a doily. This is a Stampin' Up! white doily. <clears throat> okay, and I think I'm going to put this one off this way a little bit. I'll just trim the sides of it off. two hearts and these are just little die cuts from my collection top one first and this is where I'll put the name of the either the husband and wife or the people that are getting married and I had made some bows for a previous uh, video but because I'm using scraps for my scrap bin and I have all the same color scraps around I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on top of this banner because I think it turns out it looks very nice and then you can feed the ribbon through you can use a crochet hook for twine or if you have a long enough darning needle you can do that but I found the easiest way for me was I just cut a piece of half an inch cardstock longer than the width of my envelope and I put a little bit of adhesive on one end then I stuck my ribbon and I just threaded it through that way And then you just want to thread it through that slit that you made. And if you if you think of it ahead of time, you can actually make that slit ahead of time before you seal the envelope, so you don't have to cut it off the side. Just slit down the side. And there we go. Oops. All right. So I don't know if, I'm hoping you can see that. I should have done it before I put the bow on, but there we go. Just slide it down that slit that you made and pull it out the other side. And there you have your banner. Now I haven't anchored this one yet, but if I want to anchor it, I'll just tuck a glue dot under one side of the banners and stick it down. And that's usually enough to hold it. Of course, you could stick a glue dot under both sides if you really want it to stay. But I found that one glue dot was sufficient. And these papers that I used for the background were just cut off uh, scraps that I had from a previous project that I did. And it was from the Conservatory Paper Pack by Craftsmith. And I got this one at Michael's. And now let me just take a minute and show you how I did these on the bigger one. Get that out of the way. All right, so this is the A2 size envelope. And I'm just going to go ahead and seal it. And let me use a little bit of... And of course you can do this with the V flap or with the um, flat ones like this. And I went ahead and just turned it over. I lined mine all up the same way. You don't have to, it's just an OCD thing, I'm sure. I cut a piece of uh, paper, and this is from my scrap bin because I was working with this, but I love the navy on this one. And cut it the size of the cardstock so it would have the nice border around it. And in order to uh, make the bottom of it, I just push that down to the bottom. And as I said, you could temporarily seal it or you could uh, just hold it there. And then I did my bottom treatment. Now for my curved ones, I used a CD for a template. And I just centered it in there. 
Let me turn it sideways. I don't know if I'm on the bottom of the camera. I just centered it side to side and made sure the bottom just touched there. And I traced it. And I'm going to trace this one with a uh, scoring stylus, but you could use a pencil and then erase it. And then just took a pair of scissors and cut along the score. And that gives me a, a nice circular rounded bunting bottom. And then you just glue that on in place. Now I also used a scalloped border punch. This happens to be an old one from Stampin' Up. And you can do the same thing with a border punch because envelopes are mostly pretty thin. Let me just seal this one quickly. So they usually punch pretty well. And I did the same thing. I centered it side to side and then pushed my layer right down to the bottom. And when I do these, I usually center it right in the center of my, um, my work first and I'll punch it. And then I'll move it to the one side and then move it to the other side. Oops, <laughs> I gotta move it not quite so far to the other side. Okay, and that usually matches up the scallops. You don't have to necessarily match up scallops if you want to, but it really makes a pretty bottom on that one. And I did the flag bottom the same way. I measured right to the center or eyeballed it, cut a little way up. I like my banner bottoms shallow, so I didn't cut too far, just a little way up. And then just went from the corner to that point where I uh, cut up to from both sides and it gave me a nice little uh, banner bottom. But let me show you the last way that I did with my daughter's banner. And I'll bring that back in a minute, but it was to make it look like an old fashioned tag or a standard tag, perhaps I should say. And the way I did this one was I just cut a triangle off the corner and I did measure this one because I wanted them all to look the same. I measured one inch over from the top on both sides. And then I measured one and a half inches down because that's the, I liked the way that looked on both sides. And made a mark and I just simply cut. But you don't have to necessarily, of course you could do that on the back so the marks don't show or you can erase the pencil marks. But you don't necessarily have to measure, you can just cut a triangle the way you like it and then, then having it flipped over to the opposite corner, line the corners up and cut this one off the same. And that gives you that tag appearance. And that's what I used for my daughter's banner. I'm sure you can think of other ways to do this as well and other ways to decorate them as well too. And if you search Pinterest, Instagram, or YouTube channels, you can actually find some other ideas for the envelope banners as well. And they make really nice decorations. If you have um, a certain theme, you can decorate pretty inexpensively and make it look very nice. All right, so let me bring back the other, other banners I created. I know this fills the screen, but you can see how versatile these are using envelopes as a banner base. So I hope you enjoyed this idea for using up your envelopes. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I post them. For more information on this project or others I've done, please visit rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye.